Padma Purana, Lord Shri Krishna says, Of all plants, the sacred Tulsi is most dear to me. Of all months, Karti is more dear. Of all places of pilgrimage, my beloved Dwarka is most dear. And of all days, Ekadashi is most dear. Oh, sorry. <coughs> as Satyuga is the best of the Yugas, as the Vedas are the best among <coughs> scriptures, as Ganga is best of rivers, so Karthik is the best of months, the most dear to Lord Krishna from his Purana. If somebody performs even a little worship of Lord Shri Hari in this month, he offers, Krishna offers that devotee his own abode. If you want to go to Vrindavan? Very easy. Just do a little worship. If somebody burns a lamp in the temple of Lord Shri Hari, even for a short time in the month of Karthi, then whatever sins he has acquired from millions of kalpas are all destroyed. And then very interesting. O Narada, I have personally seen that a person who happily reads the Bhagavad Gita in the month of Karthi does not return to the world of birth and death. So who wants to know that? Then I, you want to come ahead? Okay, I go. I'll see you there. But the rest of us, let's read Bhagavad Gita in this month. Of all gifts, the gift of a lamp during the month of Karthi is the best. No gift is a sequel. In the holy month of Karthi, which is very dear to Shihari, one who bathes early in the morning before sunrise attains the religious merit of bathing in all places of pilgrimage from Padma Purana. In case one is unable to do this for the entire Kartik month, he should try to ensure that he bathes before the sunrise in the last three days of the month. Devadashi, Chaturdashi and Purim. We can't do it every day, just the last three days. Also, as we know, the last five days are very important. They're known as yeah. Bhishma Panchami. And this is special type of vow we can take as some austerities we do. And none of us, anybody here observes or has observed ever? No. Okay, they go it. So, very important, if we can do it, uh, amazing results. And the most amazing result is that it pleases Lord Krishna. So I wanted to read some of the quotes from different scriptures. And then we'll go to the pasta. So on this evening, Krishna sneaks out of his house in the middle of the night, which he did that almost every night, by the way, and goes to a place known as Manshiwat. And there he starts to play his flute. His flute had an amazing quality, well, Krishna had an amazing quality, but when he played his flute, it not only played in the ragas that nobody had ever heard before. Every time he did that, the uh, demigods, the Gandharvas were famous for their musical talents, they started looking at the music book and say, this tune is not there. This, this is not there, he's making it up. And he probably was making it all up, but this sounded amazing. But even more amazing than that was if he was playing this to call the cows, how many cows were there? That just belonged to Nanda Maharaj. And then there were other people, they cows, who knows, millions and millions. And every cow heard his name being called. So Shamila, Dhavli, you know, they're all hearing their name, they come running. So similarly, this night, actually midnight, when he played this flute, all the gopis heard their names. And some were sleeping, some were doing some house chores, some were there with their husbands, some were their mother-in-law, or their children. Whatever they were doing, they heard their name and just dropped it and ran from their home. In the middle of the night, not worrying about who will say what, 
not worrying about the wild animals who are in the forest, not worrying about you know, stepping on sharp stones or thorns or whatever, because they were all bare, bare feet. They all came running. Does anybody know how many do gopis were there on this night? Why guess? Take a big number. <laughs> how many? Just say a number. One or eight. Sorry? One or eight. One? One or eight. Oh no, way more than that. One. No, millions. Sixteen. Yeah, in millions, but how many millions? Sixteen. Sixteen thousand? No, there were you think about wives or something. Copies in Vandava for this Rasila. How many millions? Just ballpark. Sixteen. Sixteen million? Who said that? Okay. Three billion. Oh my God. <laughs> this is according to Srimad Bhagavatam, so I'm not making it up. Three billion gopis. They all showed up. Don't try to understand how they all fit. Were they all in Vrindavan? <laughs> yeah. I'm Vrindavan. In Vrindavan. This is why Vrindavan is not physical, it's not material, it's transcendental. Yes. So, you heard me? Yeah, okay. It's transcendental, therefore, yeah, they all fit. Not only that, let me tell you other thing. If you go in Vrindavan today, like Bij Mandala, and you want to go from Bars Vrindavan today to, let's say, Kamiwan, or Barsana, or Nandana, it seems like very far away. But Krishna and Radha will get there a couple of minutes. How is that possible? Because like lotus flower, with all its petals, that's the design of that Bij Mandala. And transcendental, it's contracts, and expands. So, for example, when Radha is coming to Krishna, it contrasts with this case quickly. But when Radha's mother in law says, I'm not coming, it expands. So, it takes a very long time for them to get there. So, that's the quality of the Nama, it's transcendental place. So, that's three billion was just the gopis for him. Don't forget the gopis for Lord Balaram. Don't forget the parents, children. Who knows how many billions of people were there? It's all in a tiny place called, well, Brijmanda, it's not just Brijmanda. It's actually scientifically proven too. Somebody made a, you know, at midnight in the month of Kartika, uh -huh. so they used the ultrasonic cameras, you know, they yeah, yeah. study of ghosts. So they they went there and they can actually hear, you know, the, the movements and they can, the camera was catching the movements. Wow. And, uh, you know, the sounds and, you know, as millions and billions of people are, you know, dancing around. Wow. It is actually a truth. It has been scientifically proven. Like something happened there. It's not just in scripture. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Yeah. By the way, do you know how long that dance lasted? Yes. Well, yes. Well, yes. How many years? Years. How many? <laughs> I just gave it up. But how many? This is Brahma days. One Brahma day. What? Well, she's right. One Brahma night. Just same, same amount. That's 4.3 billion years. That's one night of Rasa, Rasa. So 3 billion gopis dancing with Krishna for 4.3 yeah, billion years. No, I'm sorry, I didn't say that. 4.3 million years. That's one night. So 4.3 million years. That's a long time for Nasa. Anyway. Just just the background, so all the gopis show up in the middle of the night. And Krishna says, You girls are from decent families. What are you doing here? With another man. Go back to your husbands, go back to your parents. You know, what will people say? You know, you should not it's not become you, you should go back. Now can you imagine how the gopis are feeling? But they control their anger. At least they almost, almost always did. And they said, it's not our fault. When we hear your flute, we lose all control. We lose all sense of propriety. We forget about all the rules and regulations and the controls and this and that. Because any, every time we think about you, every time we hear your flute, we lose our consciousness and we don't know what we're doing. 
So by the way, here we are, and we're not going back. So you have a choice to do what you want to do. And you say, well, okay, now that you're here, we have a dance. So the dance started. Now in this particular dance, there were different types of gopis. So one type of gopis are the Nitya Siddha, the eternally liberated, who are always with Krishna in the spiritual world, wherever he goes, they go with him. So it's like the Sakhis, Radharani herself, and many Manjuris, they're eternal. And they're the purest, and there's no issue with them. Then there were other gopis. So for example, when Lord Ramchandra was going through a forest known as Dandakaranya. Anybody read now mind? So you know about and there were lots of sages in that forest. And they looked at Lord Ramchandra. And even worse than Shubhnaka, they all fell for him. So these are sages. And they all went to Lord Ramchandra and said, My dear Lord, we know who you are. And we know who you are, but we lost total control. So we want to have a conjugal relationship with you. I thought, <laughs> I said, my wife. And they said, we know. So the Lord Ramadan said, well, this particular past, sorry, uh, incarnation, I've taken a vow of being a one woman man. So when I come back, in Dwapar Yuga, at the end of Dwapar Yuga as Krishna, then you can have, satisfy your desires. So those sages had come in as gopis. Some of the demigods had also been asked to take up from the gopis, so they were there. And then you may know that when a devotee becomes an absolutely pure devotee, is ready to be promoted to Guru Pandava. They don't go there directly. They take one last birth in wherever Krishna is having his past times in the material world. So in that Vrindavan, these people appear to be trained